Hello, this is Nate at 907 Bikes, and I'm going to be showing you how to install your race face effect or turbine style cranks. The turbine and next cranks have an identical installation procedure, but for this video we will use the next. Tools you will need are an 8mm hex wrench and a 2mm hex wrench if you have the turbines or next. Let's start with the effect. This is a picture of the parts you will need to install your effect cranks. There is a drive and non-drive side crank arm, as well as a black and red spacer and 8mm crank bolt. These will come in your bag of small parts. Let's start with the non-drive side crank arm. Typically, there will be a large glob of grease inside the crank spindle. Use your finger to collect some of this and spread it inside both sides of the bottom bracket. This will help install your crank spindle. Now, insert the non-drive side crank arm on the non-drive side of the bottom bracket. Keep going until the crank is flush with the bottom bracket. For the second step, install the red and black spacer on the drive side of the crank spindle. It is important to face it so the larger black section is outward. Time to install the drive side crank arm. Make sure the splines are adequately greased on the crank arm. Now, insert the crank arm on the spindle so that it is opposite the non-drive side crank arm. Thread the crank bolt into the spindle and use a 8mm hex wrench to tighten the drive side crank arm down to 45 foot-pounds. Check to make sure the crank spins freely and that there is no side-to-side -side play. You're done! Here are all the parts that are needed to install a turbine or next crank. There is a drive, a non-drive side crank arm, as well as two 1mm spacers and two bearing shields. First, we will prepare the non-drive side crank arm. Slide a 1mm spacer down the spindle, followed by a bearing shield oriented so the flat side is toward the 1mm spacer. The bearing shield may be tight. Use your fingers to wiggle it back and forth until it is flush with the crank arm. Apply a high quality grease inside both sides of the bottom bracket. This will help to install your crank spindle. Time to install the non-drive side crank arm. Insert the spindle into the non-drive side of the bike and use your hand to wiggle it through until the bearing shield is flush with the bottom bracket. The spindle may fit tightly. This is normal. For the drive side of the bike, Prepare the spindle by installing a bearing shield, followed by a 1mm spacer. The flat side of the bearing shield should face outward, and it should be tight against the bearing cartridge. Apply a high quality grease to the spindle. It's time to install the drive side crank arm. Line up the crank arm so that it is opposite of the non-drive side crank arm. Now, thread the crank bolt into the spindle using a 8mm hex wrench. It may be difficult to line up. If you feel the crank bolt resisting or not engaging at all, Remove the crank arm and try again. Tighten the crank arm down to 37 foot-pounds. For the final step, use the palm of your hand to hit the drive side crank arm. This brings all the extra spindle protrusion to the non-drive side of the bike, where we will eliminate it using the preload ring. Loosen the preload ring clamp bolt with a 2mm hex wrench, then rotate the ring toward the back of the bike until it is finger tight. It should be snug, not extremely tight. Tighten the clamp bolt once more, again, not extremely tight. The preload ring may be damaged if tightened too much. Check your crank to make sure that there is no binding and no side-to-side -side play. You're done! As always, we recommend a final check by a qualified bicycle mechanic to make sure your bike is ready to ride. Thanks for watching, and have fun on the trails!